it's another video here. Don't forget, go underneath this video if you want to learn live on Zoom with myself, another professional trader, Alex, who I'm a trading mentor with. So this is going to be all about managing your trading capital, a topic that is very much on the tongues of a lot of our students when they come into our live trading room. They come in with all kinds of capital. Some people have lower amounts, some people have a lot, particularly people in our VIP service where we take them from newbie to pro in 30 days. But no matter what size your capital is, you have to do the same thing. It's massively reduce your risk so that you can last the long-term game of trading. Because at the end of the day, if you're looking to make money trading, it's not going to happen in a few days. You're not going to take several trades and be rich. It's just, that's just bonkers. Okay? It's bananas. It's, it's, it's lunacy. If you want to make money trading, for most people, with normal amounts of capital, be it low or high, you're going to take lots of trades over a long period of time and make money that way. Because when you do that, you naturally lower the risk of you busting and having a margin call. And it's much more safe because along the way, you're going to be taking gains even when the market slumps against you. So arranging your capital in an effective way is absolutely paramount to trading success. This is something we had to do yesterday, obviously, because news came out, it moved markets a lot. Um, and decisions therefore have to be made about how we reduce our risk so we can keep going and make money over a long period like we already have. So let's just jump in and have a look at it. I'll do it via trading view. So managing your trading capital efficiently is going to come down to a few things. Mostly it's the equity size you're starting with and then it's how many assets you're going to pop in your portfolio. So for example, if I just load up a euro dollar chart, let's say, and um, I'm going to trade, and I'll just put it, I'll just quarterize it. It doesn't matter the time frames of the assets. I'm going to trade the pound odd. Um, I'm going to trade the euro dollar. I'm going to trade the pound New Zealand down here. And then for my fourth pair, we'll just pick something else. We go for the euro cad, right? You've got four pairs here. Now, once you add four pairs, rather than just trading the one euro dollar, mostly you want to just drop your risk significantly because now you're dealing with more assets and inherently more risk. The more uh, you diversify your portfolio, uh, you are flattening out the chances of you getting a big, big exposure move on the market run against you significantly. But you are also taking on drawdown on those assets, okay? So if you've got four of them and you normally trade eight, okay, you would just half your size of what you would have for eight pairs, right? So let's say you're starting with $20,000 You've got uh, eight forex pairs. You know, you might decide, okay, well, on eight forex pairs, for you know, hypothetically, let's say you might trade uh, five micros a pair. Let's say zero point zero five. You might then decide, okay, well, if I've got twenty thousand dollars, instead of trading zero point zero five on um, eight assets, okay, I'm going to trade 0 0.1 or one mini lot on four assets, okay? So as you reduce the amount of assets you've got, you can up your size. And as you increase the amount of assets, okay, you can lower your size. And it's a really good idea to do this because the more assets you've got in a portfolio, like I said, the more you're going to have to deal with. Now, if you were trading the euro dollar here and you said, you know what, instead of trading the pound board, I'm going to trade the pound dollar, what you've now done is you've ex increased your exposure um, for, your, for the US dollar, essentially, because you've now got the euro dollar and the pound dollar. Okay, so you need to be careful of that. Uh, managing your trading capital is going to come down to mostly having it in one account. That is normally the easiest. Now, I do trade several accounts, okay, and you could... You know, if you really wanted to have a separate account for every single pair, if you're only going to trade four pairs, but it's going to get a bit higgledy piggledy and it's not absolutely necessary to do that by any means. Um, so I would say, basically, if you're going to look at how to manage your trading capital, it's going to be in one account with a few pairs to start with. One, two, three, four. If you wanted to put uh, something like, uh, you know, futures market, let's say you want the S&P. Okay, which has rallied an awful lot. Um, this is actually the futures market tells you the price over open five five zero two. Um, if you wanted to have four in there and one of them was an indice or an index, then that's fine. You know, you can do that. But I would just again half your size on the S and P because of its inherent nature. You know, it's rallied for an extreme amount of time. 
Now, if we swap this to eight, you've got the euro dollar, pound dollar, let's say the dollar CAD, S&P, euro CAD. Uh, we could have the euro New Zealand, let's say. Okay, pound odd, and then let's say you want the pound CAD. Okay, you've now got various pairs to focus on. Okay, and again, if you wanted to, you could split this in half. You could have one account with $10,000 trading these, and you could have one account with $10,000 trading these. It just splits things up a little bit if, if that's what you prefer to do. Like I said, it's absolutely not necessary. As an advanced trader, like uh, myself, my partner, and many other people in our trading room, you can just have it all in one account, and lots of people do. Um, but if you would like clarity, let's say instead of the dollar CAD, you're trading the you're trading gold, and let's say you've got gold and the S and P, and then you've got six FX pairs. You could indeed have one account with gold and the S and P, and then the rest of well the other account. Let's say there was ten grand in it or whatever. You would then look to have six, okay, six FX pairs. And what you've done there is you've split up the uh, the assets essentially. Instead of having a big, big uh, one account of all of it, okay, gold, S and P, and six FX pairs. You could have six FX pairs in one account with one lot of capital, and then uh, you could have the the you could have gold and S and P in the other one. And you could also, perhaps, if you wanted to, go further and add more indices into um, that same portfolio on one side. So you're managing your trading capital by putting a certain amount um, into these investments, these four, and then putting the rest of it into these. And you can judge your size and everything in between um, accordingly. Now, if you're using prop firms as well, you can do the same thing, because obviously on a prop firm account, it's gonna be completely separate. So you can form a portfolio there, of uh, Forex pairs, you know, other pairs like gold, S&P, indices, whatever it may be. Um, you could even, as well, include uh, commodities. You could have your oil on here as well, let's say. So again, you could have a portfolio with gold, S&P and oil for one lot of capital. And then you could have the other lot of capital with um, on, on Forex pairs, essentially. Now, I would say probably to trade gold, oil, and S&P, you'll need a bit more capital, okay, because they can be slightly more violent, different pit values, etc. cetera. Um, and if you want to trade um, Forex, you could have the lesser amount in there. So you would be managing your capital by asserting a lesser amount onto um, things that don't swing as violently, if you like, and are quite standard things to trade, like basic Forex pairs, pound or Euro CAD, Euro New Zealand, uh, whatever, dollar CAD, whatever it may be. And then you can also um, have the larger amount on pairs like, uh, you know, oil, S&P, gold, etc. So you're managing your capital by basically how many pairs you've got, how advanced your trading is, and how difficult the assets are to trade or their pit values or what is going to incur a larger loss. Of course, if you put one micro in here on gold, you know, you can still be reasonably far down on a 10k account. On, on vicious, violent moves. So I hope that helps. That's a bit about how to manage your capital. We'll probably do a bit more on this, but if you want to learn exactly how it's done, go underneath this video. We'll teach you every day live on Zoom with our brilliant academy. Thanks for watching. See you soon.